Welcome to Fan Fiction Reading Time, the show where if you watch the second episode first, please don't, I complain about fan fiction and ask if I can have it. Today we've got something so irredeemable, so mind-blowingly awful that even I don't want it. No, we're not talking about one of mine today, we're talking about the Chaucer of the modern day, the Crystal Knox of fan fiction, Christina Prime 23. <laughs> now today we're going to be doing the show a little differently from usual. Since I've read this fanfiction before, normally I just browse fanfiction.net for the worst thing I can find in 20 minutes. This time I remembered an author so bad, I don't know why this wasn't made the first episode. If Christina Prime was a historical figure, she would be the wrong time wrong place man who was nominated for the 93 Darwin Award. If you want to click away, I don't blame you, but please don't, I need you to increase my average watch time from 47 seconds. I guess it doesn't help when I post 8 second videos, but still, I've got 30 plus minute videos, that should count for something. Thomas was working on the mainland for a maximum of 5 weeks after the Farquhar branch line closed for repairs. Thomas was not the smallest engine in the Northwestern, the smallest was Percy. And we need to know this, why? A, given that this is a railway series fanfic, we probably already know this about Percy. B, maximum of five weeks? Are you serious? I guess this takes place next year. You'll only say maximum of five weeks when it's something that's been loosely planned. Learn how to spoken, it's not hard. The biggest engine on the railway was Gordon. He liked pulling the express, but didn't care for some of his other jobs. So is this intended for newcomers, or does the author, and I'm going to call the author a she for convenience's sake, and a male would have written 30 H's instead, think that we're so stupid, so clinically brain dead, that we could not have figured this out by ourselves. I am insulted. A goods train, a goods train, the shame of it, oh the shame of it, Gordon said. Gordon, shut up. You've been complaining since the 1920s. It's getting old. Oh, Gordon, it, can't, it honestly can't be that bad, Thomas asked. Oh, wow, she knew where to put the question mark. I'm, I'm actually surprised at this point. Meanwhile, in Equestria. Oh, yes. Pony America. How lovely a place. Twilight, you've been working on that spell for three weeks. When will you get it done? Twilight's number one assistant asked in concern. Hey, be glad she's got a chance of finishing it at all. I've heard of some ponies who die before they finish their spells. You know this, Spike. I am almost done, Spike, Twilight said, but before she could get the final part of the spell added, the strangest thing happened. Twilight's, uh, Twilight's horn began to glow, and then she let out a yelp that was so loud it sounded like a steam engine's whistle going off. Oh no! <laughs> This has no cataclysm. It's just a contrivance without the intellectual courtesy of an oversized coat. Twilight, Spike shouted. Before he could say a counterspell, his surrogate mother disappeared. I have nothing to say to that. Meanwhile, uh, sorry. Meanwhile, at the Brighton Works. Hey, we're going on an adventure in space, time, and realities. Don't look that up, please. I beg you, don't. Twilight's point of view. There was, a round, there was a sound that I didn't know that was coming from the other side of the place I was in. I yelped in an, and an LB and SC tender engine looked up and smiled at me. What was that quote from Bluebells of England? Yeah, that. Donald himself already disproved this ever being a possibility, because he, and also Twilight, are steam locomotives. At the same time, you violated the golden rule. No steam locomotives off the island have faces. Okay, I'll give you that Oliver has a face on the mainland, but it could easily be that uh, the whole book was from his perspective. In fact, if you read Gordon Goes Foreign, the only engine that has faces are on Sodor. While the foreign engine does have a face, he's already there. Also, how do you know of the Lender Brighton and South Coast Railway? You're from Pony America in the future. John. Hello there, I'm Johnson, but you might call me John. What's your name? Shit, that was Liverpool, wasn't it? Yeah, I should I should stop doing uh, fake accents. I, I'm, not, I'm not good at them. Okay then, Nixon. Twilight. Twilight Sparkle, and I used to be an equine alicorn, I said. Exposition! And it's exposition that we don't need since the, target since the target audience is fans of both properties. This author thinks, with their, the, this author thinks that we're so clinically 
brain dead that she needs to spell things these things ah that she needs to spell these things out for us I'm, I'm not even going to edit this part just so that you know how how badly i'm doing right now john was surprised you mean you used to be an acorn royalty he asked i said yes i said and then full stop and then yes well then let's get you steams up your grace he said shyly fluttershy would have loved him I'm sure she would. Where am I going to work at since I am obviously a tank engine, I said. Oh, you'll be working on my railways, my new tank engine, a voice to my right said. Oh, I can't believe I forgot to uh, add uh, tags. Okay, for paragraph uh, 14, which is the one after exposition, um, it, the um, what I was going to say was, Wow, it just keeps on going. It doesn't make sense either, since you'd think that steam locomotives in Brighton, England, Thomas's universe in the 1910s, wouldn't know about the land of Equestria, which may I remind you is in a completely separate plane of existence. Even if it's not, it's at least on another planet. And he just goes with it, okay? Also, steam locomotives aren't the ones to steam up their peers, their drivers are. You should know this by now. Toddlers know this. And, Twilight, how do you know that you're a tank engine? You're not a corkscrew, and you've only been a steam locomotive for about, what, ten minutes at the most? The only time steam locomotives are seen in the My Little Pony show, they've been tender engines. I don't even watch the show, and I know that. Although I know that because I watch Mr. Enter, so... Whoa, I... Oh. Whoa, I yelped and accidentally bumped into some trucks who said in an annoyance, full stop. Oi, get a wrist, they chanted. But when they started to tease me, they soon learned never to mess with the former princess of Equestria. Even though that you're a steam locomotive and you don't, you shouldn't have magic anymore. Old Buck lads, the first truck said. But I biffed him into his brothers. You're a sort of American. How do you know this terminology? You don't even work on a railway. You've only been in England for like ten minutes. I can't accept this. No nonsense, I said, or I shall rip you apart like Oliver did to Scruffy, I threatened. That happened in the future, not in your universe. This is 19-something teen. That happened in 1970. That means nothing to them. But they eventually stopped. Or rather, they soon stoped. Yeah, I read that right. Stoped. When I arrived at Naport Station, that typo is consistent throughout the entire thing, by the way. When I arrived at Naphart Station, which I thought was just the name of the town, I meet a red tender engine. Excuse me, but can you tell me where Naphart is? I asked the red engine. But this is Naphart. Where are you from? James asked. Uh, I tried to do sort of a Lee Mac voice, and I don't think I—I I don't think it worked. I'm gonna keep doing it anyway, they, anyway though, because um, because I hate you all. I guess. I don't, though. Brighton on the mainland, I replied. End of Twilight's point of view in brackets. In brackets, normal point of view. Edward gasped. Er, gasped. With a P. Please don't. Please don't write Edward gassing. That's. That's something that the world does not need. Almost as much as shipping steam locomotives. Steam loc. Okay. I can't believe that I've had to say this as many times as I have, but steam locomotives don't have sex drives. They're built, they don't reproduce. New engine for Thomas's, bra Thomas's branch line, full stop. Edward could hardly believe his eyes, the new engine. It's six small wheels a sh Okay. <coughs> Sorry. He had six small wheels, a short, stumpy funnel, a short, stumpy boiler, and a short, stumpy dome. Ripped straight from Thomas and Gordon. Well, I mean, it says the new engine had etc 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 but you you get the point it's it's copied completely from the reverend's words that's why i've always wanted to be here uh engine said in in a feminine voice is something wrong do i have sin on my face she asked no but you have terminal contrivance uh, if you uh, terminal contrivance disease you have like a uh, uh, there was going to be a joke there but but uh, but I'm an uncreative, uncreative little fuck. No, it's well, you're not a big engine, Edward asked. 
I mean, sad. Shen. And in case you're wondering why I'm giving Edward a Scottish accent, he, he was built in Glasgow. Just look it up, it's true. Or don't because you're an adult and you haven't cared about Thomas the Tank Engine since the 1980s. Or you're a child nowadays and you don't care because the show's kind of shit now. And it really is. I I don't know why they had to give the, give the rights to head entertainment, but man, they just... They really messed up Thomas the Tank Engine nowadays. It's it's almost unwatchable. Even with this new writer that everyone says is pretty good, it's not. It's just not good. You don't watch the modern series. Just, just like, for new stories, I don't know, read the Railway series. <coughs> there, there's uh, 40 of them now. 41, I mean. If you want more Thomas. Good Thomas, I mean. You're gonna have to get him imported from the United Kingdom, or just, I guess, listen to new controller one, read them. <coughs> uh, sorry. <coughs> yes, I am, Twilight snapped, despite the E2s having coal bunkers so small that, that they weren't good for anything other than dockyard shunting. No, you know, James said. Muttering under her breath, I was big enough to do what I said. Wait, all the man is like, you know, shit. I keep get, I'm getting these accents confused now. I should stop doing. Yeah, I'm gonna stop doing it. I'm gonna stop doing it. I'm. I wait. All I meant is that you're not as big as I am. Edward said. Well, I mean, Edward, you're not exactly the prince of size, either. I know that with a good driver, sizes doesn't matter, but you're a 440, you were built in 1896, and even for 1896, you weren't exactly that powerful, so you don't really have much right to complain about Twilight Sparkle not being a big engine when she has more driving wheels than you do. I may not be as big as you, uh, I may not be as big as you, but I am very hardworking, and I can handle trucks and coaches all the same. Twilight, you're not English. Just because you're, this body was built in Brighton, like, I don't know, 30 years ago. Uh, oh wait, I guess, she replied. I have, a li I have a little song I sing, and it keeps the trucks from causing trouble. And, uh, listen, okay, it's just... <coughs> it's just the giggle at the ghosty <coughs> giggle at I can't I can't say this I can't say this title giggle at the <coughs> it's that song from the first episode for the first two part of the Pinkie Pie saying I only know this because I tried watching it and I just couldn't do it but yeah, the the author couldn't have picked a more appropriate song, or I don't know, made one up. No, she had to, she had to just pick whatever came to her mind first and giggle it. <coughs> came to mind. <laughs> came to mind. And and I guess the author has a little bit of self awareness because like even even the characters in the in the fan fiction. Like, even they know that this is completely stupid. Like, James says, tell me she's not, and Edward just says, she is. And, like, in a, in a, I, I, I'm, sh I'm shrinking at the thought, but in an even less competent fan, f in an even less competent fan fiction, like, she would, she would have had them just join in with her, so this tells me that either the author is a troll and is just like a really good one that doesn't really have any sense of shame anymore, or there's a little part of her fighting for control with the other bigger part of her that's writing these. And when she finally gets those little moments, she, um, she finally gets those little moments of control. She tries to sabotage her stupid herself as much as possible in order to tell the... And it's just screaming for help. Just screaming for someone to go over to her house and end her life already. Somehow a giggle at the ghosties actually manages to get these trucks calmed down. And so uh, the fat controller who... 
is actually called the Fat Controller comes over and says, "Well, I see you did your best to get the." Okay, sorry. This is this is a hard one to say. I mean, all of these are, but you get what I mean. I well, I see you did your best in get these yard organized. The Fat Controller said. And keep in mind that this author seems averse to the idea of a comma, so every time there should have been a comma, except for one single occurrence, is done with a p uh, is done with a full stop. At least I'm fairly certain there was only one single occurrence. Giggle at the ghosty. Why giggle at the ghosty? Why? Author, is there no other song you could have possibly picked that would have been more appropriate for the situation? Well, thank you, sir. Organized is my middle name. Twilight Organized Sparkle, Twilight said. <coughs> God, I think I'm getting brain cancer from this story. Ha <laughs> ha, good. Tomorrow you will go to the Steamworks to have a new coat of paint. Thank you, sir, Twilight said, and puffed away. There's nothing to say about these. Moving on. At Tim the Sheds, there was another tank engine like her. Ooh, now we're getting into the part where there's things to say. Lovely. Thomas looked up and saw the most beautiful thing next to the magic railway puffing into the berth next to him. It just gets worse. It just gets... It, it gets worse. Somehow. And... By the time this episode is over, I don't know if I'm going to be alive. Because these are just so bad that... Uh, I don't know why you have to have shipping in these. Like, I... Shipping, man, why? Uh, shipping is the worst thing to ever happen. Even worse than Adolf Hitler, or if you... Or if you want to contest that, uh, what's his face? Joseph Stalin. He's, shipping is worse than, worse than both of those combined. Thomas, hello, I am Thomas, Twilight. And I am Twilight, the new tank engine to help you on your branch line and the main line. Um, she, she didn't actually, uh, say the word you. I, I added that because my brain is an idiot and keeps auto-correcting. The one time that I wish that my brain didn't have an autocorrect. Cause like, and like, autocorrect is bad on phones, but autocorrect on brains is amazing because like, it keeps your, it keeps your typing in check and in your same style. And like, it's great, you know? And, uh, but, uh, not when you're hosting a bad fan fiction reading show. So how are you enjoying Twilight? How are you enjoying Sodor's Twilight so f- Oh, this is, a, this is another tricky sentence to say. Let me, let me see. How are you enjoying Sodor Twilight so far, Edward said. It's hard to read because there's no comma there. There's just, how are you enjoying Sodor Twilight so far? It's, it's just a string of words that, without punctuation, it just loses its meaning and I can't keep track of what word is where. This is the importance of the comma, ladies and gentlemen. Sodor is a grand place to be, but I want to see the world, Twilight said. Hmm, I wonder who else said that. Seriously, if you can't be creative for at least one second in your life, then you should just hang yourself if you're wanting to be a fanfiction author. Just open a vein. We're only halfway through... Are only halfway through. Actually, no, we're an eighth of the way through. There are four of these things that I'm going to read for. read for, <laughs> read for you today. You should be glad that I am here to give you a little bit of thought, or else if you had just read these one after another by themselves, your brain would have just atrophied to death. But, well, here I am doing it so that you don't have to. I'm like the nostalgia critic of bad fanfiction, except, like, somehow even less likable. I didn't even think that was possible. And before you get on my case, I don't hate the nostalgia critic. He's okay. But, I mean, you gotta admit that he's... The way, the way he does it is, is kind of controversial. 
Gordon groaned as you would when two of your shunters say that they want to see the world. I mean, Thomas did eventually do that, but once he said, but like the first time he said, I want to see the world, which was in, what, 1925? He didn't end up actually seeing the world, he just got his own branch line, which isn't the world. It's like 15-20 miles in the same island. So it's not even like a different country, it's still, it's still England. Still the Isle of, Isle of Sodor. Almost said Walney there. You will have to get used to shunting cars and coaches, Twilight. Full stop, said Emily. Oh, I will get the hang- oh, god, that slipped into so- I said I wouldn't do the accents anymore. Uh, oh, I will get the hang of shunting, Emily, Twilight said. But all the same, this is just like any- uh, But all the same, this is just like my previous life back where I am from. Full stop, she added. Oh, man. <sighs> Commas. I hate to bore you guys, because this is the same thing over and over again, but commas help help people read your story so much, and when you don't think they're important, this is what happens. This is why you always include commas in your story, people. Where are you from? James asked in confusion. And the next sentence is the most ridiculous thing that I've heard in this year, I mean, it's only been five days, but still, the most ridiculous thing I've heard in, enti in an entire business week. Here we go, are you ready for this? Because I'm not. <coughs> <coughs> I am from another dimension entirely and became a tank engine completely by axi accident, she said. The other engines burst out laughing, all except one. Wait, is that... Oh, oh my god, that is. Ladies and gentlemen, we found one. We have found a comma, ladies and gentlemen, and it wasn't even the one that I know of. There are two, there are at least two instances of commas in this, um, 2,000 word chapter. At least two instances of commas in a 2,000 word chapter. You have got to be kidding me. What did I ever do to you? Did your did your key just not work? How do you know what commas are, know when they're used, and not use them? This person just had this person this person cannot exist. Yet they're so they're so good at masking it that I that I also doubt whether they're a troll. Hey, this person may actually just be insane. And and no, insanity isn't doing the same thing over and over again. Albert Einstein said that, but no, insanity is is actually a, a closer definition of insanity is not being able to uh, tell reality from fantasy. And even that doesn't include every possible case of insanity. Sometimes it's just. <sighs> Sometimes, and it's, well, I mean, in some cases of, <coughs> in some, in some definitions of the word insanity, um, multiple personality disorders are, uh, put on that, uh, on that list of what constitutes insanity, so, maybe this is just an inner war with t two different personalities, one of them is vaguely competent and the other is just not. And this is the result. The competent one should have been competent enough to know that what what she needed wasn't wasn't a computer. What she needed was a a knife. Enough! That is no way to treat the Princess of Equestria, Thomas shouted by accident. Yeah, that's not just me being... not knowing how to spoken. That's... That's the second time this person has said accident. And I, I'm pretty sure that that's pretty consistent as well. <sighs> the other engines were shot. Well then, you're... Why are they going... Why are they going through with this? Okay, it's... Why do they trust Thomas the Tank Engine and some, and some new... 
okay, yeah, Thomas the Tank Engine is, like, the third oldest engine on the railway by build date. Second only to Percy and, uh, Edward. He's not exactly uh, uh, what I'd call trustworthy or anything. Uh, but, but, like, even if he did uh, take what Twilight Sparkle said seriously, because he's kind of a retard in, in the newer, <coughs> newer seasons, uh, why would the other engines... I, are they also all retards in the newer seasons? I don't... I don't think so. I watched King of the Railway, and the other engines didn't seem to be as incompetent as dumb as the tank engine. Well, I guess maybe Percy, but, but that's... But other than him, the other engines seem to be fine. I don't know why... I don't... <coughs> oh, God, this, this next sentence is just... Uh, so bad. It's it's this entire fan fiction rolled up into into one thing. I I dare I even say it. Uh, I have to. Well then, your highness said Percy. What type of engine are you? Uh, there are just so many problems with this. Uh, with uh, there are just so many problems with this statement that I'm I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to write them all down. Hold on. So let's <coughs> let's go through with it. let's go through with this. One, both Thomas and Twilight are the same class of tank engine. If Twilight had been an E4, then it might have made sense. Two, even though they don't really resemble E2s at all, they should still resemble each other due to being the same class. And the adventure begins. Thomas comes in some version of an of a southern livery like twilight should have done i have i have issues with this film but it's canon since hit made it as much as i wish that weren't the case three why do you care you didn't ask gordon by the way you wouldn't have been by chance to be in a one would you <coughs> four even if twilight was an early e2 with the shorter side tanks that was the only difference between the e Two types of E2. Not even the midget like bunker was changed between the two batches, and they could have totally done that. Five, why are you going along with it? This is the same reason that I hated the introduction scene and finally revealed. These are still people, and if someone told you that they're from an alternate dimension and were a horse, unless you were stupid enough to think that finally revealed was a good idea, you'd think him insane and not at all in touch with reality. And yet here they are, some of these engines over a hundred years old, and they're just going along with it. Uh, this next couple of paragraphs that are just so bad, for the same reasons. Oh ho hey ho, laughed Twilight. I am still not used to being called your highness, but I think I am in the exact same class of tank engine like Thomas. Sure, I can buy that, but then why are the others excited, and why do the others know what an E2 tank engine is? An E- oh yeah, an E2 tank engine, the others shouted. Why do you know what an E2 is? You never worked in the South in your whole working careers. In fact, some of you were there before... Uh, oh wait, no. But... <sighs> some of you were built after the E2s stopped being built. Some of you were built after the E2s were scrapped. <laughs> yes, Twilight said, but then shush them with here, th thick Scottish accent. With all your wished your coming on control. I did not know that Twilight was supposed to have a thick Scottish accent. I know what I said about not doing accents anymore, but... But, like, I'm still gonna do, like, uh, characters with really thick Scottish accents. Hell, I mean, Donald and Douglas's entire character is that they're Scottish, so, sure. Well, they are reached. Here come the young controller. The next day, Sir Topham Hatt sent Twilight to the Steamworks to have a coat of paint for her choice. Uh, we're just barely over halfway through. 
Hello, Victor said. Who are you? I am Twilight Sparkle, Twilight said. So what type of paint would you like? Victor asked. Lavender and magenta, please. Full stop was the reply. That was completely... That was just a waste of my time. There's this little rule in editing. If If it doesn't... If it doesn't advance the plot or have meaning, don't leave it in. You just look like you're incompetent because you are. Soon she was on her way toward Wellsworth when she heard an engine whistling. A question mark. Help, help, they're pushing me, they're pushing me. Douglas, Twilight shouted. Further down the line, a deer... A... a uh, a deer was passing, was you know, was grassing the grass by the track. Gordon was on the opposite line when he heard. There wasn't a single comma in that sentence, and it was 22 words long, I think. I see at least two places to put a comma, or even a full stop. You could have put a full stop somewhere. You know what a full stop does. What? Douglas screamed. Oh, dear, help, help, help. On, on, faster, the truck said, laughing. I didn't want to go any faster, Douglas shouted. Douglas's brakes, Douglas's brakes got on fire. <coughs> I can't even gasp. Why are his brakes on fire? Last, <coughs> last time I checked, the, the 612s didn't have wooden brakes. I mean, I didn't see any information for their brakes, but one of their, but one of the batches did have information in it, and it was, um, it was like, uh, air brakes or whatever. Uh, Douglas, me brakes, new stop, I want a stop. Ooh, Twilight, use your brakes, use your brakes, Twilight shouted. I can't aim me brakes are on fire, they're made of wood, Douglas replied. Uh, it's an incomprehensible language, my speech. You thought I was gonna say their thick Scottish accent. <laughs> Uh, Theer thick Scottish accent, didn't you? I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to couple the couple up behind you, Douglas. I'm gonna try to slow you down. She said. She shouted to the guard. Couple me up. Couple me up. I need to slow Douglas down. She shouted. All right, the guard replied. Oh no, try again. Try again. Twilight said. We mustn't give up. We have to try. She said. Twilight yelps and tries to catch up. Faster, faster. The guard said. Uh, Douglas screamed as he continued on and on. Then he saw something that made his boiler run cold. Crosby Bend was dead ahead. If your boiler runs cold, you you end up stopping pretty soon because then that <coughs> because then that means that your fire is out. And if your fire is out, it's probably dropped on the ground, which means one of those sleepers is gonna catch on fire. You didn't really think this through, did you? Did you, Douglas? Crosby Bend was dead ahead. Wah! Screamed Douglas. No, Twilight shouted. I'm going off the rails like a crazy train. Douglas shouted. He didn't actually say <coughs> like a crazy train. I just wanted to force in that reverence. Oh, ah, oh. Whoa, dear, the truck said. Oh, hungra, hungra. What kind of a... What kind of a word is hungna? Twilight ground to stop. <coughs> when the dust settled, she gasped. Douglas had, had derailed and was on his side with a cow looking at him. Thomas was right. Thomas was right. Cars can run an engine off the rails, Twilight said. Don't worry, Douglas. Stay there. I will go and help. Edward Thomas and his coaches were wearing nap herd with Sir Topham Hat and oh he's Sir Topham Hat now I guess. When Twilight rushed into the yards. Was was that Twilight the fag controller asked. Wake up, wake up, emergency, she stated. Judy, Jerome said, Jerome, Judy said, I think these are characters I have no idea. Emergency, they said in union. Douglas is off the line with his <clears throat> His brakes wear on fire, Twilight explained. Right, Jerome said. We're ready, Judy stated. The crew up, Jerome shouted. Twilight, where do you think you, the fat controller, shouted? You know, because apparently he d he doesn't have any authority over his uh, his own engines that are supposed to, you know, keep to a, a strict schedule. Sorry, sir, but this is an emergency, Twilight said. 
Back at the bend near Crosby, back back at the bend near Crosby Station, while I was hard at work pushing the re-rail trucks away. Oh dear, go gently, <coughs> go gently. They said. I hope this will teach. I hope this will teach you to almost some trucks a lesson. Twilight said. Do you have Douglas at the front there? Do you have Douglas at the front there? Judy Jerome asked. Yes, Jerome. Ready to lift? Replied Judy. Me too, Jerome said. Let's go. Whoa, Douglas said nervously. There's a comma. There's a, two commas. Three. There's three commas in this. Th at least three commas <coughs> in this whole thing. Two thousand words, and there's three commas. That's uh, a little over one every one thousand words. You fail at this, Arthur. I, uh, I don't. I don't think I have much left, which is good because. <coughs> This is going. This is only going on. This, this only has a, a quarter left. We're almost done. We've. Uh, you're all right. You're all right. Jerome said. We've got you. Judy said. At last, Douglas was back on the rails at the top. <coughs> but Matt had come to make sure everyone was all right. Well done, Twilight. Now you can take Douglas to the. Works. Do you know the way? He asked. Yes, sir, I do, sir. It's where it was painted lavender and magenta, she replied. <laughs> That's right, the fat controller chuckled. Later, it's in the jets, the other engines. The, the, other, the other engines are there to congratulate Twilight on the job well done. Uh, on the uh, job well done, I mean. Good job, Twilight. Today you really were the best engine, Edward said. Oh, I agree, Donald. What you did was terrific. Really useful, that's what I think, sir. <coughs> said Sir Topham Hunt. Douglas, you'll have new brakes, a bit of repair here and there, and a new coat of... <coughs> and a new coat of pain, and you, Twilight, do your bravery and selfless act of heroism. I've shown yourself worthy of having your own branch line. Uh, uh, what do I have to do? Take a shit or something? Why does Twilight get her own branch line? Last time I checked, you bought her as a station pilot. Now there's nobody else that can, that's going to shunt Gordon's coaches. Me on branch lines? That is shot Twilight. <coughs> that's not all, said an unfamiliar voice, except it would have been familiar to both the audience and Twilight's part. <laughs> And Twilight Sparkle because it because it's Celestia. Uh, uh. And a bright light suddenly shone, causing everyone to shield their eyes. When it had stopped, there to Twilight's amazement were were here friends and princesses, Celestia Lutus and Cadence along with the Prince Shining Armor. Uh, it's so hot in this room, I can't open the window because I'm doing this. Also, that's the possessive form of princess, not the plural. You really need to learn how to spoken. <coughs> Twilight Sparkle, element of magic, I really knew you could do it, said Celestia. I mean, Celestia said. But how do you know where I would? But how did you know where I but how did you know what I was? Twilight asked, confused. It was your assistant, Spike, who had informed us of your disappearance, but I can see that you made new friends that have really earned this. And I'm sure that everyone's gonna agree that Twilight is a really useful engine and princess of friendship. The last year responded. We don't need that pesky element of magic. No, we can defend the kingdom with with just five of the six elements of harmony, most definitely, even against threats that I can't do. Actually, you know that I think about it, Celeste, you probably could just act as the element of magic. But I don't really think that she's Twilight's friend's friend, so who knows if that'll still work. Also, she doesn't ever actually... <coughs> she doesn't ever actually say how she found out where, where Twilight was. 
thank you, princess. I won't let you do it. No, so don't man. That's, don't, that's for sure. And he stated, Oh, God, doing that voice makes my throat hurt even more. But before anyone could say anything, Gordon asked something that caused everyone to start laughing. But, sir, who will fetch our coaches? Some of us aren't meant to shut the store, Gordon stated. Well, I mean, in the 40s and 50s, you guys had Duck do it when he wasn't busy. And you guys bought Percy specifically for that purpose, but then you gave him to Thomas's branch line for whatever reason. Even though you already had Toby. And it, and it was completely common practice for steam locomotives to have their coaches shun it for them. I mean, the steam tender locomotives. Because their backwards running isn't really that good and it's kind of dangerous because because of their tender. Ah, uh, this next sentence is insulting. I don't know, Gordon, perhaps you should fetch your own until Sir Topham Hack can buy another small tent engine like Twilight, he said, full stop, jiggly. You know, until he gives the new engine to Twilight's branch line, huh? But, but Gordon started to protest, the others were laughing. The next day, Twilight and a pony driver along with Thomas saw an engine puffing to the yards that they hadn't seen before. Douglas, ahem. Douglas, is that you? Twilight asked. Okay, Twilight, ahem. Now, what do you think about the new paintwork here? <coughs> oh, God. He asked. Well, Douglas, I mean, no. Wow, Douglas, you look splendid, Thomas said. I know I'm ready for me coaches, Douglas said. We have Twilight's coaches now, Douglas, said Mary. Yes, and she even has her own branch line, too, said Martha. The last time I checked, Douglas, uh, Donalds and Douglas just took normal Northwestern coaches, and also, why does Twilight have her own special coaches? Edward doesn't, so why Twilight? Oh, whatever. Off to see the world, Twilight, Thomas asked. <coughs> yes, Thomas, I am, Twilight said. Oh, uh, this thing was so poorly written that I think I'm going to have an aneurysm. And I think that uh, my, my time is going to be up pretty soon. I'm going to cut this off here. So go. <coughs> go with God and don't take any wooden bags. <coughs>